Hey you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job, we're gonna be doing a shop made tools. We're gonna to be making some roller stands to go behind the lathe in the machining area. So I've already made two roller stands. One I use in the welding area to support jobs that are being held in the welding positioner or the rotator. It's height adjustable, it's very, very sturdy. The other one I made in a hurry one afternoon in order to put a longer job through the headstock of our lathe. It is made out of box section and a large piece of plate on the floor. Because it is a flat plate, it does tend to rock around a little bit because the floor in here is not 100% flat and adjusting the height on that you do need to lift it and hold it by hand and then you have two bolts on the side of the box section you then wind in so you can clamp the rollers at a certain height so you don't really get much fine adjustment with that it does serve a purpose but it can be very difficult to adjust the height on it and it does tend to move around on the floor a little bit so the stands I'm going to be making today they will be in a tripod configuration so all three legs will be on the ground doesn't matter how uneven the ground is they will all be touching and they will also to be height adjustable using a thread in order to wind the rollers up and down. So like most projects, I never have enough time to do them. These parts have been floating around the workshop for about two years now. So it's about time I made them because doing it the other way is just a real hindrance. So to make the stands, I've got some plates that I got cut from our local supplier. We have some hollow bar, some solid bar, four wheels, 50 mil water pipe, and a few other bits and pieces. So the first thing I need to do, I need to machine the threads onto our solid bar, and that will be used for adjusting the height of the rollers. The solid bar we're using it's two inches in diameter and it's a 1045 grade So the thread we're gonna be cutting, it is a two inch by 12 TPI, pretty standard. I do have a lot of nuts here that suit that thread. So we're just gonna make it suit what we have.
Right, so as expected, we did end up with a bit of chatter in the first third of the thread. That's no big deal. We won't be using that area, so it's not really gonna matter. The nut does thread all the way on. So that's this one done. Let's get the other one up to the same stage.
Righto, so before I cut this thread, I'm gonna change the insert and I'm gonna cut with oil instead of coolant to see if that improves the chatter issue I'm having. Righto, so that's the threading done on our second rod. Changing the insert and changing over to oil didn't really change the chatter issue, but that's not gonna be a problem for what we're using it for. So we'll get this out of the machine and we'll get the next bit. Homeless, sit. Hold on, hold on. Good boy. Right, so the next piece of material we need to machine is the hollow bar. So it is two inch by three inch. It has a precision board ID and it is going to be the support tube for our threaded rod. So we just have a little bit of machining to do on each end in order to suit our plates.
Righto, so that's all the lathe work done for these parts. I do need to do some milling. I'm going to be milling a slot up the length of the rods so I can put a locking bolt in there to stop the rollers from rotating around the stand. Now that we've got the part set up and we've found centre, I'm going to be using a 10mm, 4 flute end mill to cut the slot 5mm deep, but I'll be doing that in two passes. And just to clean up the edges where it's cut beside the threads, I'm going to be using a countersinking bit just to chamfer those edges off a little bit.
Righto guys, so that is the milling completed. What I still need to do is drill and tap a hole through the side of our hollow bar in order to pick up on the slot I have just machined. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm gonna wait till the stand is assembled. If I was to drill and tap it now in the mill, trying to keep it in alignment with everything else when there's so many variables involved with fabrication, it'll just be easier to drill and tap it once the stands are completed. So with all of that done, the next thing we need to do is take them over to the welding area and start to assemble the stand. Unfortunately, we have been expecting some rain and it is now here. It is very difficult to film in the workshop while it is raining because it is a tin roof, it is very loud. So we're just going to put this project on hold and you'll have to stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Are you ready? Yep. Wait, how am I starting it? Fuck, I've lost where we started from. Wait, how do I start that? So to make the stands, I've got plate that's been cut to a drawing I supplied our supplier. Supplied our supplier. It was put together in a pretty big hurry and I'd never really been happy with it because it was made in a hurry and it wobbles and it's very difficult to adjust the height on it. I did make it in a hurry, so that's just one of those things. Oh, fuck, who cares? I think you made it in a hurry. Yeah, I made it in a hurry. <laughs> So I've already made two stands be oh, fuck me. So it's about time I got into it. So we just need to... So the next bit we're gonna... Oh my God. I do need to do some milling. I'm gonna be milling a slot up the length of the... Fuck. I'm gonna be using a four flute 10 mil end mill. <laughs> fuck me. Now that we've got the part set up and we've found our center, I'm gonna be using an end mill. Now that we've got the part set up and we've found center, I'm going to be using a 10 mil end. Oh, it's too many mils and rhyming. I'm not M&M. I'm just running at that speed if you get in the way and I crash that. Ooh. So about how far are you going? All the way to the truck. Whoa. You do, you do, you do, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. It took me two seconds to walk there, okay. That one. It's a xylophone. <laughs> Your big chest. 